So right now we're going to have a presentation uh, from Oaken Innovations, but it's also at the same time there's a crypto economics breakout session in room 212. Just a heads up for anyone to, who's interested in that specifically. Um, but from Oaken Innovations, we have Hudson Jamieson. He is a software developer and researcher based here in Texas who spends his free time researching decentralized systems, cryptocurrencies, blockchain systems, and infosec topics. Hudson enjoys converting VHS tapes to digital formats, playing tabletop RPGs with friends, TV shows targeted at millennials, and cookies and cream flavored ice cream. Hudson currently splits his time between Oaken Innovations, Innovations and working for the Ethereum Foundation. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our next speaker. Did you make an announcement about the breakout session? Yes. <laughs> yeah. There's a so it's just in two twelve. There's nothing else you wanted to say on that. Two twelve. It's an ICO discussion led yeah. by York Roads. Okay. So York Roads is, is leading that session in, in breakout room two twelve. Now, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our next speaker, Hudson Jamieson. Hey, everybody. Um, yeah. Won't be offended if you walk out for York. She's an awesome speaker, and I'm sure that's going to be an awesome talk. But if you want to stay here, we're going to get into some really, really fun stuff with blockchain and IoT devices. So quick um, just rundown about me. Uh, I've been involved in cryptocurrency and blockchain since about 2011, doing some Bitcoin mining in college and hanging out on the forums and stuff like that. Participated in a few crypto communities after that, but what really stuck to me was Ethereum. Uh, after college, I went to work for USAA for a couple of years in insurance and then eventually was leading their blockchain program uh, in the innovation lab. Uh, I left uh, last June to do some freelance work, um, other opportunities, and join the Ethereum Foundation. So I'm still working as a contractor for the Ethereum Foundation, doing some DevOps, communications, um, a little bit of dev work, just kind of everything. It's a nonprofit, so everyone does everything, which is a lot of fun. Uh, we have uh, different governance systems we're building that I'm involved in, including our Ethereum improvement proposals and uh, just some other cool stuff down the scope that if you look it up uh, online for stuff coming out at Metropolis, look that up. It's all very, very interesting in the Ethereum world. Uh, in 2016, um, I was with a group of um, local Dallas Ethereum people and uh, a few of them got in touch with John Garretts from Canada, and we started Oaken Innovations, uh, which I'm going to be discussing in the next slide. I have a beautiful wife named Laura on the top left. Top right is Vivian, uh, one of our cats. Bottom left is uh, Fry, or Philip J. Fry. He's a little bit not all there, kind of runs into things, but it's really adorable. And the bottom right is Lilu. Um, the look Lilu has. Um, there's a small story behind that. My wife was baking, and if you look in the picture, there's a like speck of flour on her. The cat was walking through the kitchen, flour got dropped on her, and she dropped like she had been shot. She stayed there for minutes. It was the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. It was like, like it's like a freeze button on a cat. So now to the actual stuff that matters. Um, Oaken Innovations, uh, we're just a team of professionals who love like distributed systems and blockchain technology. Uh, we participated in a few hackathons, and uh, those hackathons, we won judge's choice in the first one for an IoT water meter use case, and for the most recent one, it was um, an international blockchain hackathon put on by the United Arab Emirates, where there were, I think... 100 teams, about 1,000 participants, and we took home the first place prize, which included $100,000 and a trip to the Dubai, to, 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 to Dubai to get a certificate from uh, Sheikh Mohammed. So it was an awesome experience all around. Uh, after we did that, we kind of realized this is a big deal. So we started Oaken Innovations to kind of realize our vision for blockchain in the IoT space. So. You know, uh, people are somewhat familiar with what IoT is, this group of connected devices uh, that's on the internet, but you hear all the time about these stories of, you know, bad things happening when IoT is un connected in a non-secure way to the internet. Uh, the two examples I have here are someone remotely hacking a car uh, and causing it to break. That was a bigger story a couple of years ago, but it's definitely still relevant. Uh, another one, uh, this one's more funny, but um, unable to turn down... Uh, the IoT oven, so his house got really hot. 
Uh, there's other things where there's ransomware and like Nest thermostats people are talking about. Like, I don't know if that's a real thing, but I've heard about it like as a possibility. So I mean, think about if your house is like 90 degrees and you can't change it, like that sucks. And that's on like the, that's like on the like inconvenience end of things. On the bat, on the really, really bad side is medical devices getting hacked and killing people. So you can see IoT really needs something that's gonna secure um, the infrastructure and provide like this layer of trust and this layer of uh, you know provable interaction with the people who are only allowed to use those devices. So I made this cool little image and tried to use fancy fonts uh, to describe blockchain. In my mind, when I think about blockchain, if I bring it out to its like widest uh, areas, I'd say that you don't want to use a blockchain unless you're trying to solve for one of those three things: identity, trust, or value. So value, you know, token transfer, Bitcoin, that whole use case. Uh, trust, that can be, you don't trust the party that you're interacting with in your network, so maybe you're with a competitor but you have to cooperate. Or trust that that um, thing, that you, that asset that you're putting on the chain, that piece of data, that representation of data, is what it says it is. So people call that immutability. Don't like using that word anymore because it has so many different definitions now, it's kind of been tainted. So I generally just say trust. And then identity, uh, that's, that's a really big one. Uh, there's many companies going after that right now in the blockchain space, and I think there's gonna be multiple solutions for that, but it's just gonna be amazing to have your identity and have it in a way that you don't have to have all these different siloed systems connecting and uh, you know, interfacing with you in order for you to just prove who you say you are. So let's talk about the Oaken platform, what we're really doing here. Our platform is made up of ACORNS. Uh, we love acronyms, so we did autonomous communication over redundant nodes. Uh, they ha are a layer of security that's both hardware and software. So when we say we have an ACORN, um, the example I'm gonna bring up in a second is for toll roads. So uh, the toll road use case has an ACORN, and an ACORN is the hardware security module, so in our case, for testing purposes, a BeagleBone or a Raspberry Pi. It's also the software end of things, so uh, having like a Node.js or some kind of front end, maybe using status or token to display the app to someone. And then it's behind the scenes decentralized software like Ethereum and IPFS to um, bring it all together and have that layer of uh, trust and that layer of uh, decentralized storage and efficiency for this whole IoT space. So. The use case that I'm gonna talk about today is the one that won us the prize for the UAE GovHack, and that's uh, toll roads. So what we did is we uh, got a Tesla, we uh, hacked the, I say hacked, general term. Basically we plugged in our system to the CAN bus port, decrypted it, uh, for those who aren't familiar, CAN bus is just that little like plug-in that's under your steering wheel. It has a constant stream of data about uh, your, you know, the speed, your GPS location, uh, if you're turning or not, if you're stopped. So we take that data, we package that data up, and uh, we send it through our Oaken device. It's this little Raspberry Pi that has custom um, code to sign Ethereum transactions. So we put that data, sign it in an Ethereum transaction in this mock hardware security module enclave, uh, and then send that up to the blockchain. So what we've done there is we have a machine acting autonomously on its own to send data to a blockchain. So that's part one. The second part is now we go through a toll road. When we go through the toll road, that toll gate is a part of the system that has the car registered on it. That car has an identity. And that toll gate is gonna say, this car passed through with this identity at this time with this GPS locations. Now. Uh, we weren't able to fully implement this, but the end goal here is in the smart contract, we want the GPS location from that CAN bus data to match up with what the toll gate's giving off. So rather than just you know throwing a timestamp on there and having a human look and see what's going on, you can literally have machine-to-machine -machine communication and value transfer. Um, oh, I didn't even get to the value transfer part. That's the part that's actually probably gonna save the most money. If you have a token system on this toll gate uh, system, you can bring fees down tremendously. I'll show in a graph here in a second. Uh, you can go through and have like a toll token based on Ethereum or another blockchain system that then uh, gets deducted automatically based on, that, uh, on the contract confirming without human interaction that you were where you said you were as a car. 
So this is the current model. Uh, what we have is the toll gate, and then as you go through it, it goes and it kind of connects to this whole back-end infrastructure of a bunch of different things, different vendors, different tools, different silos of technology and databases. Uh, and then, you know, it goes to a payment processor on the far end or, you know, a database that's holding it, potentially unsecure. And that all that costs money. The infrastructure costs money. Um, doing a payment transfer for going through a toll gate cost roughly 3% as far as uh, processing fee goes at the end of the day when you go from start to finish. So highly inefficient, this is kind of what we have today. So the Oaken model instead replaces all of that like infrastructure that you, we had in the center there with just a distributed network of IPFS and, uh, and Ethereum. So think about all the infrastructure we just took out of that equation. Think about making a toll road or for a whole city and not having to have all those back-end systems talking. You just have to have a box with an Ethereum node, and that has access to this distributed database of all the data you need for your cars, for your drivers, for your payment systems, for how many fees you're going to collect. Um, it brings down the total cost to about 0.01%. So it's a very, very powerful use case. So, our acorns, um, when we make our acorns, we try to make them as modular as possible. So, this might be a little bit blurry, but this is the smart contract diagram uh, that I show for how we created our tollway system in Ethereum. So, very top here, this is the tollway manager. Uh, the tollway manager uh, handles uh, creating toll gates and creating, it's, like, it's kind of like the root auth authenticator, it's the root person where if I'm a city and I'm running a tollway, I have to go through that contract to make any toll gates. I can't fake a toll gate. Mm -hmm. So uh, once a toll gate's created, uh, it interacts with a vehicle directory. The vehicle directory stores all of these vehicles that now have this identity by our uh, Oaken boxes in the car. And then we have a toll pass user account which can register vehicles, again gets mapped to the vehicle directory, and whenever they go through a toll gate, the um, rules of how much, how many uh, tokens that they owe from the toll gate uh, is sent from the toll gate to the toll user account, and then you pay the toll charges through the tollway manager. So um, the reason I, I show this is because a lot of the time when you look at um, blockchain projects, you don't see a lot of well thought out infrastructure involved. You see a lot of things where it's like, let's put everything in one contract, or let's make a whole new blockchain for this one use case, when really the, the, what, what no one's thinking about is these need to be upgraded. You're not gonna have the same toll road forever. So you need to know, you need to be able to keep this vehicle directory separate from your toll gates that you're going to expire. Or you need to be able to keep this you know, off-chain identity that's in this little box separate from what you have in this toll pass user account. The smart contracts act as a conduit for the identity that's in your car or the identity of the person paying. So we'll move on to the hardware end. Uh, this is just a really simple diagram of what we do to secure our makeshift uh, hardware security module. Um, for the future, we're basically we're in talks with auto manufacturers to uh, kind of make this specific to their cars, to their city systems, things like that. Uh, so this is going to be more robust in the future, but for now, uh, what we have is uh, the BeagleBone Black or Raspberry Pi. We have a blockchain key access gateway uh, that we've um, been able to add to those Raspberry Pi, and then you log into it using a secure element, so for example, a Java card. Uh, anybody who's done key signing ceremonies or who's had to deal with bank enclaves or HSMs is going to be really familiar with uh, some of this terminology, but basically it makes this a uh, hardware device where if you try to tamper with it, if you try to extract the keys from it, it stops working. You can't get to it. It's write only. It's you know, it, you put you put data in to be signed and it comes back out. You can't actually hack it in a way that would be valuable to you, or else you'll destroy it. So looking ahead, uh, we're going to continue building on this Oaken platform. Um, we used some of the money and momentum from the hackathon. Uh, winning in Dubai to start planning out um, a business model, see what use cases are going to be the most um, applicable for right now, the ones that we can uh, tackle and build on this. And here's some, just for those interested, some um, 
hardware designs, this industrial exterior. This is a dust-proof box that has everything inside of it you need to run uh, an Ethereum node wherever you are. So if you go to a toll gate and you see all those wires and stuff that go into 80 different networks, just put this box there and that replaces the entire infrastructure. All that cost is gone. Uh, same here, this residential one, if you have like a water meter, like uh, if you go to our website, you can see the video demonstration of it, but you know, replace the water meter monitoring system with this so that whenever you, know, you have water meter or water go through your meter, it can be uh, decentralized, monitored, uh, and like you can have your bills auto deducted without, um, without having the payment process or fees you usually have. Uh, we're having an announcement at Consensus 2017, so be on the lookout for that. It's super secret. I can't trust you guys. I don't know all you. <laughs> all right. So here's my contact information. Um, I'm really active on Twitter and Reddit. Uh, I don't like email very much, but I'll answer it. And there's our website. Our website has a three-minute video that is, was the winning entry into the UAE GovHack, which has a lot more information on our tollway use case. Um, I am going to be, after, at the next break, if you go over there up the stairs and down the hallway that has a bunch of lockers that bring you back to high school, there's some rooms, and uh, I'm going to be in one of those rooms to answer some questions further. Finally, uh, tomorrow I have an IoT breakout session. I brought a Raspberry Pi. Uh, I built a smart contract on there that we use called Blink to demonstrate uh, sending value to a smart contract and then causing the light to blink. It's super simple. If, even if you have never coded before, you can get it. Like, it's literally the most basic, like, six-line smart contract ever. So if you've never seen a smart contract in action and you're curious to, like, see it from start to finish and the flow of data and value through a smart contract, please come see it. I'd love to show it to you guys. Uh, let's see, what, what time do I got? A couple minutes for questions. Oh, out of time? I'll just do a question or two, sure. What's up, everybody? Questions? Secret project. Uh, I didn't have anything made up to tell you as a lie. I'm sorry. OK. Anybody else? There you go. We've thought about it. We haven't actually built out anything for it. We've ideated on a ton of stuff. The cool thing about IoT is, like, the solution is needed for automotive industry, healthcare, um, you know, supply chain, everything. Granted, we're not looking to get into the supply chain. Um, there's other places like SKU Chain and Chronicle that are doing a great job of that. Um, we actually have a lot of friends, like, in the IoT blockchain space. There's a, um, a group forming. Uh, we're going to be releasing more stuff, but we're building some open source documents and some structure around uh, having standards on blockchain and IoT. Uh, be on the lookout for it. I don't even know if it has a complete name yet, but uh, we're going to be uh, announcing more of that stuff in June and July. Can you at all talk about how security protocols change or don't when you apply IoT to blockchain? Do you think it's different? How do you encrypt the system? Do you have blockchain to IoT versus ISO? I would say that the, it does because every IoT device is going to have to adopt whatever cryptographic standard is used to sign the transaction. So for example, in Ethereum and Bitcoin, it's something like some elliptic curve key is what they use. So uh, they would have to all adopt that. But that's better than all this distributed stuff we have right now where no one's using the same thing. I think we should all just apply a standard. Thank you all so much.